everybody. I'm Bree the Plant Lady. And I'm Aiden. And I'm Abby. And today we are working in the woods and um, somebody had very brilliantly suggested that for the hellebores, which are a bit invasive, this one right here in particular, we try using the flamethrower to kill the seedlings and it works. So let me turn the camera around and show you this was actually the original reason to eradicate weeds yep. for the flamethrower. Of course, we've been using it for lots of other purposes, but let me show you up close and personal how this works. So we've got tons of seedlings, see? And there they are, frying. I guess you have to do it really to make sure they die all the way to the root. This is way easier than digging them up. And like you guys can see, like huge amounts of seedlings. And uh, well, I guess they aren't that hard to pull. <laughs> well, I think flamethrowing them is just far more entertaining. But I also want to see if the flamethrower will, will work on some of the other big weed patches that we have back here. So this is a really bad weed patch and this is because this used to be a brush pile. So I want to see how it'll do on this. I mean, it's probably going to be easier for me to pull this. That's what I've just been doing and it pulls out pretty easily. Yeah, we're going to use a lot of gas if we try and flame throw this whole patch. Yep. So that's all right. While you guys are graveling, I'll be weeding. So it looks like a lot, but really it's like, ooh, that's one though. <laughs> you just burned. Um, it's just a lot of mass and it pulls out really easily. So it doesn't take long to get the bad stuff out. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and commit to getting this accomplished. Well, I hope you'll agree that the effort I put in to weed this area has made a big difference. Um, I'll admit, I am being held accountable with this garden because I'm writing an article for Triangle Gardener and I need to come in and take pictures. And I'm super embarrassed to show how much privet there still is. So we've got that huge one there. And then, you know, we didn't really know where the property border was. So now that the fence is in, it's much better delineation. We have lots of privet and you can really see it because it's all leafing out. And then of course we have a lot of privet that's small because we cut it back last year, but it has huge root systems. I mean, you can see these aren't small plants. They've got big trunks and back here, they're really, <laughs> they're pretty significant. And I think what I'm gonna end up having to do is have Snell, my arborist, come out and stump grind to get rid of all of these because these are too big to dig. I, you know, when they're small, they're easy, but these are really large, really mature. Same thing with this, I mean, this giant tree. It's essentially a privet tree. And then it's filled with grapevine. And I was hoping that we could do this ourselves with a chainsaw, but I think more equipment will make it faster, more efficient. I mean, honestly, I don't even know how we would cut this and drag it without making an even bigger mess. And we have established at least a pretty good pathway for the water to flow. I don't want to mess that up by trying to take this privet out and shove it on this giant pile of brush that used to actually be up here at the top, which was really what was causing so much water to dam and not flow into the woods. So having this upper area cleared last summer has made a world of difference. Adding the gravel has made it so that water is flowing much better. And now having all of these woodland plants, all of these woodland natives through here, it's going to be spectacular long-term, but we still have some work to do to really make it be as good as it can be. Um, 
So it's definitely a work in progress. Obviously it doesn't look like much right now, but I am so pleased to see that so many of the deciduous azaleas that were up front in full sun are leafing out, they're doing well. I mean, I, they don't all look great, but you know, I think we probably have about a 90% transplant success. And I do have a few plants that I bought at Piedmont Feed from the American Beauties native plant line. And I'm gonna go ahead and get these planted now. And the soil here is so remarkable. Let me show you what we are digging in. This is basically Michigan soil. So remember, for 13 years, this was a brush pile, which is why there were so many weeds. And this is unlike out front where it's all beach sand, I've got this beautiful, loamy, essentially compost that is really easy to dig in. And of course, that's why the weeds love it because who wouldn't want to grow in this? So I'm going to go ahead and put the zizia here along this front edge of the border and plant that iris and origin on there. And I'm going to call it a night. I'm feeling very satisfied that I did spend some time and I got all those winter weeds out of here. They were really out of control. And it looks much better now that I can see what is planted, what is good, what is bad. Of course, the bad is really all the privet. And um, that gives us some steps to work towards uh, making this that much better. Well, I'm ending tonight's video on a high note. There's a beautiful distant sunset and I have gotten all of those plants that I purchased over the weekend planted. We have got rain in the forecast and I'm feeling more and more motivated to take on this woodland with the help of some professionals. So I do hope you'll subscribe and stay in the loop as we continue to make progress developing this native North Carolina woodland swamp. Thanks so much for watching everybody and happy gardening.